The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. I am so excited to... um, tell you about what we've got for you on this show today. It's going to be an incredible show uh, of um, celebration is really what this is about. The celebration of the balance, the balanced expression of the masculine and feminine. And the masculine and feminine expression, first from within ourselves, and then also to see it played out and manifest in our current reality. To become equals, we must first balance the masculine and feminine energies within ourselves. We must detach from the mind and use our feelings to tap into the eternal love that is there. We are the pioneers that must ground that love into the physical and become the models of unconditional love in the face of all that challenges us. Loving the shadow free is the journey that we find ourselves as we're walking each other home and free. And today's show is about showing you, giving you an example of what it looks like when um, the highest expression of the masculine and feminine to have a mirror and to have an example of what that looks like. My guest uh, and myself, we've been deliberately working on balancing the feminine energy and the masculine energy within us consciously over the last past three years. And it has been um, a very, very grounding and rewarding path, but certainly not without its challenges because we have um, the opposite energies, the suppressed energies of the shadow, of the ego, and of the uh, emotional suppression of the feminine. Because the truth is, is that we're all already equal. We are already all equal. It's just that we need to bring our physical vibration into that equality. uh, And we do that through doing our spiritual work. So um, heaven on earth is all about uh, vibrating at a frequency of equality, love, honor, respect, and um, gender equality. So I want to introduce you to my very, 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 very dear, 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 dear friend, Robert Skeel. Welcome to the show, Robert. Thank you, Cornelia. Lovely to be here with you. Yes. And we've been talking about coming on this show for a while and um, having these conversations because you and I uh, talk about this a lot and these are the um, energies that we work with on a consistent basis uh, to really uh, ground in a new way of living, uh, ground in a new model. And so I want to kind of give a little background to our story of how you and I met. Uh, We met about five years ago Uh, And it was morning time and I was out walking my dog and uh, you were um, doing your morning fitness routine where you were jogging and walking. And it was what I call a divine appointment, soulmates meeting each other. And at that particular point in time, when I met you, you had just lost your wife of uh, 60, was it 61 or 64, Bob? 61 years, yeah. 61 years. You've been married to uh, Joanne Skeel for 61 years. And um, you had just lost her um, about six months prior. It was in 2012. Uh, She died of Alzheimer's disease. And um, uh, you and I met. And 
when we bumped into each other and we were, it was like in, in the morning fog and it was like, uh, you know, good morning, good morning, how are you? And what is your mission and what is your plan? And uh, you were saying that it was your mission to uh, experience and live and be unconditional love. And that was exactly what my mission and my plan is and was at that time, in, at that faded time of meeting. And since that time, we have become uh, really, really close friends. We've actually moved in together. And I have um, become uh, your, if you will, caretaker, friend, coach, uh, person that um, has assisted you in reprogramming yourself from where Wait, you were forgotten, before. Forgotten one thing, though, you've forgotten muse. You're, first of all, my muse. So we've got to talk about that a little bit because you are the one that inspired me to, uh, to, to return to uh, an exciting life as an older guy and uh, actually ended up uh, being the cause of uh, uh, certainly having something to do with, with the book I wrote, the last book I wrote called The Pink Lady. So right. that, that's an important part of my statement about us, is that book. It's an important part in that, and then the other piece to it is it's an important part of you, because The Pink Lady that you wrote, by the way, you authored eight books, and we're going to talk a little bit about the books a little bit later, uh, yeah. where, where people can find your books and everything. Um, but the, the, the Pink Lady, the book that you wrote, was a book about honoring the feminine. And part of the reason why I wanted to bring you on today and have this discussion was because um, from my perception, from my point of view, where you are today and where you are vibrating and the frequency that you're emitting and the person that you're being, you're being the um, archetype and the example of the highest um, energy of the divine masculine and um, also a bringer of the consciousness of the Christ consciousness. And that's, that's where you are today. And that's what I see that you're doing. And this is what I wanted to um, celebrate with you here today on this show for, for all the other people that get to experience you um, that are absolutely, you know, in love with you because of um, this, this support and honoring that you have for the feminine but also for your inner masculine that has now been healed and has been liberated and has been rebirthed because we're also going through that rebirthing of our inner masculine right now. Um, that's, that's what's taking place on a big scale. So um, there's a lot to celebrate with, with this uh, relationship because we um, have deliberately been working on grounding this masculine and feminine energy into the new earth. One so of the you remind me of Cornelia, just in your opening statement here, is uh, is the reality that I wasn't aware of at all, coming from where I was coming from, uh, in terms of the whole idea of energy, of uh, frequency, of uh, of uh, environment, in terms of sounding, in terms of feeling. I didn't come from that kind of world. And you introduced me to that. Uh, you, you've introduced me to the idea of frequency, level frequency, uh, the whole idea of energy in a room. And you, you train me now to be more conscious of that, no matter what kind of relationship I'm in, because I didn't start with that at all. I couldn't have cared less about any energy field because that was not what was important to me. Now, over time with you, has become quite a different thing. Now I'm 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 li actually listening uh, to when I go into a room. I'm listening, feeling. Uh, I have my antenna out, catching where the energy is, and that's a whole different way of looking at, at uh, where I am. And uh, uh, it's one of the many things I appreciate about you that you've introduced me to that to that more of, uh, to that concept of uh, paying attention to how one feels in a relationship. That's something I never had before. And that's one of the that's one of the parts of me that I see is new, and uh, to be relished. So I'm really happy with that. You know what what's new about that? What you're what you're talking about? It is the healing of the feminine within you, 
And that's the part, you know, when you're walking into a room and you're intuiting and you're feeling and you're sensing the energy, it's part of that intuitive um, um, connection that has taken place um, that you're now paying attention to, where before uh, the wounded masculine was more based on logic and um, safety and and ego. And um, but now that balance that's taken place where you're listening to your inner feminine side, because we all have masculine and feminine sides. And um, no matter if we're male or female, it's, you know, and that's the part that you're listening to now. And this is also the part of you that, um, that moves into that healing place, that moves into the, the self-healing. Because as you know, um, what you and I have also done is um, you've moved into the self-healing template uh, and allowing your body to heal um, on, on, um, on, on a core level where, um, where before you weren't conscious that your body is capable of self-healing, but with the work that you and I have done together, um, there's many things that have been shifted in, in, um, your healing through this work. And that's also another wonderful thing to celebrate because now you're at a place where you can really listen to what it is that your body needs and um, be more uh, self-sustaining in that. And you know that um, all illness um, is from, from where I teach from is uh, an emotional suppression that is held within the physical body. And then we're always given our power and our authority away where we're going outside and we're looking for a pill and we're looking for something that is going to, um, you know, resolve and fix, uh, whatever the issue is. But when we go deeper, uh, into, um, what, 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 what has been ignored here? What is our body trying to tell us? And I want to go back to that specific time when, um, I think this was probably about over a year ago, uh, maybe, yeah, about over a year ago when your doctor was, um, recommending that you go on warfarin. I do recall that I came home, uh, absolutely terrified because of what this cardiologist had told me. I'd never had a cardiologist before and I was encouraged to to have one so I did I did have one and uh, and the cardiologist told me that uh, my uh, my heart was such uh, with a with a degree of some certain degree of uh, at least a warning toward an issue of uh, defibril of fibrillation and and uh, uh, agitation around the heart muscles at various points enough to warrant uh, taking a blood thinner and he so convinced me of that that I came home uh, to you and described what my meeting with the cardiologist and he I told you how how I was convinced that this is what I really needed to do to stay alive and uh, you stopped right away and you said let's let's not think about that at this point let's research it so you got me to turn to online good old google and begin to check out uh, the information, and I came away after two and a half hours of research, convinced all over again that the doctor was wrong, that this was a dangerous thing to be doing to my body if I could possibly avoid it. And I saw no reason at that point to uh, to undertake that uh, prescription at all. So then I was in. Then I had the issue of going to my own family doctor, and he was expecting me to go on warfarin. And I told him as well that I was not going to do that. This was a a, a chance for me to take command of my own body uh, and decide which decide myself which was better for me. And I decided on the basis of how I was feeling and the medication I was already taking, I had a pacemaker already installed and uh, I felt this was really, I was called, I was really, I really felt that, that what I needed to do now was uh, not to act on that information. So. I didn't. My family doctor was quite surprised, and uh, I was I was uh, liberated because I felt that I was going down a path I need not go. So I felt that was really important step for me to take charge of my own uh, medical support, however whatever form that took. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and I just want to say, you know, that I'm not a doctor at all. So I'm not I'm not one to to say that, you know, that I, I, I I'm not a doctor, but I work with people's emotions and I help them to um, go inside of themselves and really look at, okay, what other holistic avenues are there? And then, of course, first of all, release the emotional suppression that would cause this to begin with. But all of it is to liberate the physical body so that you can vibrate from a place of balance and from a place of peace. Because okay. really, that's what it is, is that... Um, uh, you know, when we're suppressed and we're taking medications, what is the reason for uh, taking that in the first place? And that's that's the whole piece. Because when we're living when we're living heaven on earth, right? When we're when we're here in heaven on earth, there is no disease, and that's the place where we're absolutely um, are now uh, living in that place because we're always bringing our physical bodies into a higher vibrational way of living and being through our consciousness and through that spiritual inner work that we're doing, and that's all that I'm doing is assisting people to tap into their own inner resource and then, of course, do the research and, and everything that, um, that is available to us to um, heal uh, and, and, and resolve the issue at a core level. Your, your, your job with respect to me, as I see it at that point in our experience, was to help me to stop and research it. You weren't saying to me, don't. Mm-hmm. You say, look at it, be very thoughtful about that, and uh, see what see what you conclude. But you you were urging me to take that matter into my own hands and not let it be decided by another authority, as uh, as powerful as that authority is, without examining it myself. And I that's that's your that's part of your ministry to people generally, and certainly to me. If you'd come on strong and said, oh, no, and really be absolute about it under no circumstances, I would not be listening to that because I really think there is a place for medicine. There is a place for Western medicine. You agree with that. There are occasions when when you need medicine to to treat certain diseases over time, but it all bears examination by yourself. You have to come to a conclusion by yourself. And that's that's what I think too often we don't do as a people. We don't stop to ask ourselves what our own resources are, where we might go to develop our own our own strengths to to meet whatever the disease is. And so we need to look at that first. And you call me back to that. That in that sense, you are very holistic in your in your attitude. And and, and I really appreciate that in that case, but because I was genuinely frightened. Right. I, was, I was really afraid that I wasn't going to live, you know, very long unless I did something like that. No, so why don't we why don't we tell do, would you mind um, sharing with the audience where uh, first of all wh- what your wh- what your age is right now and um, how you're feeling in your life like right now how is your health how are you feeling where are you at <laughs> that's a big question but I'm, yeah I'm, I I think I'm up for it I'm 91 and uh, I'm playing with the idea now of of uh, trying to change the added the cultural attitude toward somebody who's 91. So I've just reduced my age to myself to 71. Uh, chronologically, I know I'm 91. There's, I'm reminded of that every day by, by things my body tells me. But I also know that other than chronologically, other than physically, I am not 91. I am more like 71. And that's the way I feel. And I have decided, listening to other people talk about how we as a people have been programmed all these years, uh, from the beginning, uh, from the very day we're, first first day we, we breathed any fresh air, to now for the first, they say, in fact, for the first 35 years, you by the time you reach 35, you have been totally programmed uh, to be, among other things, uh, uh, a consumer particularly a consumer. And uh, so that's been one of the things that I had in mind when I said, well, if we're going to be programmed, we're going to be programmed and we're going to be culturally trained in to respond certain ways to certain things. Why not get into the issue of reprogramming? And so I decided I was going to take that, that mission on myself and to, to begin. So I have begun to reprogram myself to be 71 in, in all the respects that I can. 
And I find this really exciting to, because I'm beginning to see that if I think I'm 71, I'm going to be more likely to feel like I'm 71. And that is turning out to be true in my case. I am feeling really good about 71. I've had to train myself to change my birth date uh, to remember myself as born in 1947 and 1920 instead of 1927. That throws my children off. So, Dad, you must have had me when you were six. And I <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going through that kind of thing. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, it's just a it's a wonderful place for me to be. I'm feeling strong. Uh, the, the, the weird thing I come up with is uh, I'm feeling younger as I get older. That's sort of where I am at this point, Cornelia. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of that, for a lot of that, uh, you've been you've been the, the power behind it that's helped me to get to this point in my life where I can actually begin to see myself uh, as uh, younger than I otherwise would see myself. Because because I've looked around me and I've seen so many people even younger than I am chronologically, who are just having a hard time. And not, of it, none of it, not all of it's their fault, but I really wanted to take myself seriously and to, and to take my own health. Uh, uh, and so that's where I am. I'm just and really, so, yeah. yeah. And so where is your health? Uh, I'm, I seem to be in good shape now. Uh, I'm... Uh, on a regular exercise program, as you know, I've been on it since 1974, I think, uh, trying to run or walk every morning. Uh -huh. uh, I've undertaken a series of, uh, of uh, yoga practices that I've uh, developed for myself to do at home. So I do body exercises and walking every morning uh, as a rule. So that's one important area to keep your body mobile and and to keep your body flexible as possible. Mm -hmm. I see it as an essential part of my life today. I wouldn't think of going through a day without, without doing that. Would also, you think, would you think um, of, of you going through your day uh, without um, doing your spiritual work? No, I wouldn't anymore, no. That's, that's where I really start in the mornings now. And uh, it's gotten more and more important to me as I've gone along here. For, for several years now, I've been working with uh, in the field of of meditation, yeah, and uh, I've been focusing now at this point, and it varies from day to day. But generally speaking, I've been focusing on uh, working on this notion of healing, of self-healing, and have have begun to focus on uh, uh, seeing my body as a whole, uh, working working to visualize uh, my body as perfect, and then then going through each part of my body and uh, visualizing that and then uh, working toward uh, any place where there is, where it's not perfect to try to focus on healing that, that part. For example, I have a, I have a, 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 a left foot that as a result of surgery is, does not feel like my right foot feels because it's number and it's just, uh, it, it feels strange to me. So I've been working on, focusing on that to, to try to get that uh, changed. And I'm, I'm convinced that over time, I can, I can visualize this, my left foot being perfect, and in time it will become perfect. And so, yeah. same, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, um, everything that you're talking about, like your, the consciousness that you're holding and what you're talking about, the self-healing and the, um, the uh, liberation and your practice, uh, your daily practice of um, reprogramming yourself and self-healing and nurturing and honoring of the physical body, um, that, that all requires that balance, that inner balance of the masculine and feminine. And, you know, to, to really even move beyond the logical mind, because sometimes things, you know, we can't explain everything with logic. And, uh, you know, moving into this... Um, uh, allowing the body to uh, receive the healing, and um, and and you're 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 living that practice, which is also part of the divine masculine's energy. It has that high level of uh, liberation and consciousness that you're holding, and so then you're already bringing your body into a relaxed state of of being. 
And it's, it's, it's really um, celebratory, Bob. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this and celebrate this with you out loud so that other people can be inspired by, um, you know, the, the old saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. Yes. Right? The, yep. that, that's not true. That's the question I raised with myself. Can you do that? And you have shown me how that can be done because I am, I, this old dog is learning new tricks. And, yeah. and, and here's the thing about it, Cornelia. I get excited about this, not just for myself, but for everybody else. Because what I have discovered, anybody can discover. We all have, we all are part of the evolutionary process. We all have within us this capacity to heal, to, to uh, love, to create, to use our imagination for good reasons and to live an exciting life, no matter what age we are. We have that power within us. And I'm excited that everybody, everybody can tap into that. So yeah. that's where I am. And, you uh, know, I want to ask you a question and then, um, we, we may be able to, I want to ask you this question because I, I sat down and uh, I want to bring a few specific things out. What would you say right now has been the challenge for the masculine energy, the masculine ego um, to learn how to trust the feminine? What would you say the challenge has been? Because part of the reason why this is happening for you is really truly because you've learned to trust. That's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what would you say the challenge has been? Where, where, where has the challenge been for the, the masculine um, ego to learn to trust the feminine in, in leadership, in, 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 in um, allowing? And, and where would you say the challenge has been? Well, the challenge, I think the challenge for me, and there, there's several aspects to this, but one of the challenges for me uh, would have to do with uh, overcoming your own, uh, your own male ego and begin to take into consideration uh, the, the, the gifts that uh, a woman brings uh, to, uh, to, to my, I'm just thinking in terms of myself, to my, what you bring, for example, to me uh, is, a, is a, uh, a, a, the things that are particularly uh, things that I see in women generally, and that is this tremendous uh, uh, dependence on uh, their own intuitive abilities. Mm -hmm. you, you are a master at picking up on where you are intuitively. And this is something I wouldn't even thought of. Uh, I've heard about it, and uh, but had very little respect for it because my whole training had been in terms of academic training, in terms of intellectual development, in working with concepts, working with, with uh, the development of the reason, the capacity to reason, thoughtfully, uh, but but uh, it had very little to do. In fact, if I if anything, I had a distrust of anything that wasn't something that could be worked through reasonably. And so the idea, what you've done for me is to introduce me to the uh, validity of acting on your feelings. That that's an equally, if not even more important thing to rely on in terms of making decisions than just strictly uh, uh, reason. So. And I want to point out, I want to point out that, you know, when you said that you had a mistrust, there's a lot of uh, people out there, masculine and feminine alike, that have a mistrust in the intuitive feminine. Uh, you know, that you, because it's, it's really trusting that inner guidance yourself and, and being able to listen to those feelings and trusting the feminine, trusting the leadership of the feminine within yourself. And then it's, it's shown, it's showing up in your closest relationships, right? So I just want to, um, we can talk about this a little bit more, but we're going to take a quick break. Uh, you're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie show. I'm with my favorite person, Robert Scale. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Janet Hickox, and I want to tell you a little story about a story and how my friend Cornelia Stephanie helped me through to the other end of that story. I have gone from the dark of a story I was telling myself that wasn't true to the light of optimism to see my way out of where I was and to where I want to go. And it all started with uh, her scheduling a session for me to help me reclaim my money or my financial empowerment. 
up until that point, I had been telling the story that my business was dying, that my business was not successful anymore. And the more I tried to figure out what was going on, the worse I felt about it. And when I had to get ready to do the session with Cornelia, she asked me to go look at the numbers and where I was uh, through the year to date. And then also to come prepared with a number that I wanted to uh, raise my income to. Well, I was quite comfortable with that part, right? I knew where I wanted to be. Uh, what I wasn't comfortable with doing is going and looking up those numbers. But I made myself do it, even though I tried to backpedal my way out of the session. Um, she didn't know that, but I was going to try to get myself out of the session. And I looked up those numbers. And it was incredible that I discovered through that process that my business wasn't dying. In fact, I was doing 12% better than I had the year before. So I was shocked. I was shocked literally at the power of the story that I had been telling for months. But more than that, I was shocked that I had allowed myself to get there. And uh, later in that day when I had my session with Cornelia, she pointed out some very obvious things like, how are you going to get where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go? How are you going to get there if you don't have the goals written out, if you don't have it uh, set up so that you know where you are and where you're going to go? Totally makes sense, right? If I, and I had been in business, uh, somebody else's business as a sales manager for years, and I, I was a national sales manager. I had awards for sales management. I had business awards because of numbers. And yet when it came to doing my own business, I totally forgot all that I'd ever learned. So by the time Cornelia working with me in just one session, got me to look deeper at the numbers and where did I want to go and actually, you know, claiming where I wanted to go. Um, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope. Like you can't believe it was like, everything shifted for me. And I am so looking forward to our continued sessions to see how far I can really push myself to get where, I, where I've only dreamed of being, where I've never taken the dream and actually brought it into concrete existence. So thank you, Cornelia, for the work that you're doing out there. I appreciate it, and I can't wait to see where I go from here. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, and we're talking about the balance of the masculine and feminine energies today. And I'm with my dear, dear, dear friend, Robert Skeel. Before the break, we were talking about how a lot of people uh, don't trust their inner feminine. They don't trust their inner feminine, and especially, you know, the males, uh, the masculine energy doesn't trust the inner feminine. And it's really our job as um, leaders and as teachers of the divine feminine to um, pave pave the path and show what it, what it's like when we're living and trusting our inner guidance, our inner intuition, our um, making decisions based on our feelings, and that that is okay. And that's what Bob and I were talking about. Is there anything else that you want to say about that, Bob? No, I just I just have had some experiences that uh, have led me to feel that if I had had any trust, any confidence in uh, feeling as part of the equation in deciding things, the uh, some of the relationships I've had, particularly with women, would have been different than they turned out to be because I just kept hanging in there when my feelings were telling me not to do that, that that was really uh, hurting me rather than helping me and not helping our relationship at all. And so I was working on intellectual grounds, conceptual grounds instead of grounds of feeling. If I had the feeling there as part of it, things would have changed uh, radically and would have been much better. So I think I've learned a lot in the process, uh, to, uh, which, which allows me now to, to to fully consider my feelings with respect to any any kind of connection I have with anybody, and I I'm I'm just so delighted that I can tell others about this finding for myself. It's really been extremely helpful to me. Yeah, and can you imagine if a lot of uh, men were were living that way and were trusting their intuitive 
And, you know, this is, can you imagine if the, the men of, of today were living in their divine masculine rather than um, the fearful, uh, wounded masculine that is still in, 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 um, in healing, you know, in need of healing. Can you imagine how uh, much better things would be for them and then for us as a whole, right? Which is part of the reason why this work is so, why this work is so um, important. I want to, I want to talk about, um, first of all, I, I want to share that um, your, yours and my uh, relationship is a strictly friendship and professional relationship where um, we're not, we're not um, a couple, but we are um, yeah, uh, not, friends. We're not, sexu- we're not sexually involved. Yeah. No. And so it's important to say that because you have a partner and I have a partner. Correct. And um, so it's important, it's important to say that. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been my opportunity to um, really bring my gifts, my intuitive gifts and the work that I do into this relationship and um, ground the masculine and feminine energies in together with a person that is willing to do the same thing. I, want, I really want to, I want to really step in here, Cornelia, yep. because yep. this is really important to me. I never would believe mm-hmm. that a guy like myself could be in a relationship with a woman, an attractive, a younger woman, at, or whatever age, as far as that goes, and not have some sexual connection with that, some some level of intimacy with that person. I have discovered through you and with you this glorious, wonderful sense of things that in fact a man can have a relationship with a woman like I'm having with you which is strictly spiritual but extraordinarily deep and that's one thing I want to focus on because a relationship with someone of the other gender can be can be a, a tremendous experience for both people without having to have an sexual expression of that as part of the equation and I, I'm really excited to find that out. And you are the one that's really helped me to do that. You have moved me beyond my love for you, my sexual, uh, my love, my desire for intimacy with you to, to uh, a whole new, what you call an intimacy of, with God, which struck me at first as a male and with my ego as something that was just ridiculous. And I didn't want to, I, I resisted that all the way until I understood what you meant by an intimacy with God. And then you turned around and then you helped me to move from my love for you. I didn't, it didn't cancel my love for you, but it moved it so that the focus was, was a divine focus. And that meant all the difference in, in the world to me and continues to now because that to me is the very center of anything that I'm doing now that's really changing things for me. It's really changing my life completely because now I am centered, I am focused much more on the divine within me, which anybody can find in themselves because because of the magnificent creatures we are, all of us, we have that power within us. And to discover that, to even begin to get, to get a smidgen of what that's like, as I'm doing now, is an extraordinarily exciting thing for me. It makes, it, it makes my living now even more exciting than it might be other. It, it, it's, it's actually the base of everything else. So you, you, you've led me there, Cornelia. You, 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 you took you you directed me toward this other reality within me that turns out to be the most important thing, probably the most important discovery in my life. So, yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's it's. I'm so honored. I'm so honored, and I'm so blessed by you. And and throughout you know this um, journey that you and I have been on. We certainly have had our challenges because oh, yeah. um, the people in the community, there were there were people, even um, part of your family, uh, your children were were thinking that um, I'm I'm going to take advantage of, a, of an older man, and I'm you know uh, there were there were lots of things that yeah. were uh, yeah. brought brought out um, that were really challenging, where we really were able to now. Um, bring that unconditional love and that unconditional acceptance and then also that love and respect that needed to happen because they were just projecting their fears 
onto this situation because it was a karmic thing. A younger woman with uh, an older man, she's trying to take his money, she's trying to take whatever. You know, so this was all karma that was being cleared out. There was that situation. And then there was another situation where uh, some of your friends, a couple of your friends who um, were, you know, thinking that I was also taking advantage of, of you and wanting to call elder um, services or whatever. Like you didn't have a, a mind of your own or that you couldn't make decisions on your own. And it was all this kinds of interference that was being, that we were being bombarded with. But what was continuously left at the core was the truth of what we were doing and the, the respect and the honor that we had for each other. And that was um, what had to be honored. And, and we did that. That was not easy. That involved my children, uh, misunderstandings across the board uh, with friends as well. And uh, I realized just how powerful cultural things are in our lives. And, and uh, who hasn't heard of yeah. younger women who take advantage of older men? And so that's part of the mythology that's operating. Well, it's not even a mythology. It is, it, it is in fact, has happened, does happen, frequently even, some people would say, yeah. in our society today. But it was not, the, it was not the, our situation whatsoever, never would be. Uh, because uh, what they, but most people, including my own children, did not have the sense of you that I had come to know, which is your absolute integrity and your tremendous generosity and uh, the, how, how beautiful, uh, lovely presence you are for anybody, but it's always one that's uh, just uh, uh, one of in total integrity and, and uh, honesty, and, and uh, that, that is a great thing to, to uh, be able to say about you and your approach to anybody, to anything, actually, is your, is this, are these uh, attributes that I'm, I'm assigning to you because are, those are absolutely, absolutely accurate. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, what, um, just to kind of sum that part up is it, it offered me the opportunity to stand in my integrity, no matter what, and stand true in love. And this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes we're going to be um, in, in the midst of the challenges in order to offer unconditional love and unconditional acceptance to myself and then other people, especially when there's projections made or attacks or whatever, um, to really then again come, come home to the truth of what the truth is and stand in that. And um, it is the path of the divine feminine. But remember, everybody, we're clearing the slate of karmic projections all the way across the board. So if you're finding yourself in your life where some of that is going on with, um, you know, any kinds of projections like that from other people, um, just know that you're clearing the decks right now into um, unconditional love. And unconditional love is not always easy. It's not, it's, it's not fluffy. It's not, um, it, it takes work to offer that love and to be able to stand and hold the truth in that. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace, was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now, and even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life, I still refer to Cornelia as my coach and I still work with her on an ongoing basis where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth. After working with her for many years, I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach, uh, coaching program, and it has absolutely been an amazing process. 
I now am a certified empowerment coach and I got certified through her program and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you won't regret it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with Robert Skeel, and we're talking about the balancing of the masculine and feminine energies. But we, before we go any further, I want to send you to Robert's website. He has an amazing website. He writes poetry um, every day. And um, he, he publishes that on his website. And also, I want to tell you about his books. Go to www.robertskeel.com and um, be inspired by this amazing man that is absolutely living life and enjoying life at, and reprogramming himself at, at his age. And it's, it's absolutely inspiring to be part of his presence. His book called The Pink Lady... Um, is uh, you can also uh, contact him on his website and um, he'd be happy to send you a copy of this book. And then there's also uh, Dementia. Dementia Loves, Loves Bittersweet Journey, uh, a book that he wrote with his uh, wife of 61 years that died of uh, Alzheimer's disease. And so if you know somebody in your life um, that is going through uh, dementia, he also has this book available. We're going to put these books on his website very soon. So, um, Robert, I want to talk about um, your perfect match. Recently, you met a new love in your life. And this is a love with a woman that you are now uh, in love with. And so I want to I wanna talk about that. Yes, that's a, uh, uh, a delightful thing, a delightful subject to, to talk about. I want to start back to uh, something that occurred before we ever, before I ever discovered uh, this, this, new, this new person in my life. Uh, and I don't think, I, who knows what, what's behind, the reality behind this, the, dy the, the, the dynamics behind all of this. But uh, it, it began some time ago when I decided finally, uh, with your, with your uh, influence, to really decide whether I wanted to even have a partner at this time in life or not. And you you said, well, make up your mind. And uh, I finally did. And I added it to a mantra you had already already had me uh, uh, convinced to try for a period of time. And I was doing it because it really did reflect where I was in my life and still am. And that was the mantra to begin with, was, was uh, to actually speak out every time I could think of it, certainly once or twice a day, out loud to myself, to my own body, to the universe, that uh, 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 I'm open, the mantra was, I am open to infinite possibilities. I am open to anything that might come along that might be valuable to me. I'm open to change. I'm open to uh, a redirecting of my life. Whatever it might take, I'm open to it because I do not want to bind myself up in, in the preoccupations of old age. I just do want to go there. So you helped me to begin with by, by constantly help reminding my body and reminding myself just to be open to possibility, just be open to miracles. That's the term you use, I think. Just be open to miracles. 
without even having to think about what miracles might be, you know, miracles. Huh? But anyway, I just said to myself, just be open to miracles. Okay, so that started it. So then I'm trying to think, do I want to have a partner in my life? And uh, finally I said, yeah, I really do. If I did, if, if it was a kind of partnership, where, which would be a relaxed environment, a relaxed equal, environment. And an equal partnership. Equal and partnership, yeah, an equal part. I wasn't thinking in terms of equality, but that's basically what it, what, what it amounted to. Mm -hmm. And you were reminding me right along what these possibilities might be, what, what, the, what the perfect partnership might be. But then you actually mentioned, why don't you work that right into your mantra? Why don't you work that right into your concept of what you want and just let the universe decide it? I was spending so much time intellectually trying to say, okay, what do I want in the way of a perfect partner? Uh, what does she have to do? What, you know, I was deciding this and she had to, the only thing, the only thing I was really concerned about is that I wanted her to be sure that she was, I wanted to be sure she was petite. She had to be petite. I did not, I could not understand. I could not accept the idea that, that I might find a partner who was uh, six inches taller than I was. That just was not, not some, that, that's my ego still operating. Uh, but anyway, to look up to my partner when I wanted to talk with her is not my idea of the ideal partnership. So with that written in, uh, I want someone who was petite and a perfect match otherwise. So that's what I started with. So I just sort of laughingly started with it, but then it got pretty serious. So I started really working that whole thing, saying, this is what I really want, this is what I really want. I want to, I want to be open to a miracle, and that miracle would include a possibility of, of finding a partner who was petite and also a perfect match otherwise. And she has appeared in your life and she's been here for, she's been here for the last month and you two are just in a, in a brand new partnership relationship and you both are uh, as excited. I think two magnets were drawn together with you and your person. It was like magnets and you, you two were drawn together and now you are in a partnership with someone that matches your values. So, Robert, we don't have much time left. We've got three minutes left. What is it that you want to say uh, left to the audience before um, we close up this amazing show with you today? I just, I just want to, I want the audience to know, uh, Cornelia, just uh, how valuable you are to me and have been and how valuable you have been to others, clients and others who, who have, uh, you have met and talked with. Because uh, I'm, I'm, uh, we're living together here in the same house, and I'm, I'm involved to some extent uh, in in hearing how you're moving, working with clients, and uh, what's involved sometimes, and 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 the challenges that are there. But I want to, I want to leave the viewers here with an understanding of where what, what the difference has you have made to me. That's what I really want to talk about. So I really want to, I really want to uh, uh, find a way of, of, of telling the audience about just how critical. You, you got know, two minutes. Okay. Before so, we go off air. <laughs> okay, right. So uh, as Cornelia said, I, I lost my wife to Alzheimer's uh, after 61 years of marriage. And Cornelia's come along and she has actually changed my life. She has really transformed it in in the most wonderful way. Uh, and the simplest way I can describe it, is, Cornelia, is that having grown up as I have grown up, I really believed in the the, 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 the whole teaching of Jesus to, 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 to love your neighbor as yourself, right? And I, and I really paid attention to the love of neighbor. That's been the sort of the center of my life up until now. And that hasn't changed any. I've drawn great satisfaction in that. But what you've done for me, Cornelia, is to focus on the self, love your neighbor as yourself. That's what you've done for me. You've pointed to the self as being extremely important in bringing any kind of love to your neighbor. So uh, that has created a whole new balance within me now between those two that wasn't there before. It was too exaggerated toward neighbor and not enough to self. Now that has come back around and I couldn't be happier with that contribution that you've made to my life. You have drawn me inside you have brought me, as I said earlier, to, to a whole new way of thinking about God being inside. And uh, uh, you, so then I followed that with my own intellectual pursuits. 
reading and trying to develop even that more. So, so it's all worked out into a totality of uh, that I really appreciate, Cornelia. You have brought me. We are you. You. What was the phrase you used? Uh, walking home together, something yeah, like that. walking each other home. So walking each other home. That's what you've done. You are walking. We are walking each other home, and that is the most beautiful phrase I can think of as a poet. So walking each other home. I love thank, that. And thank I you so thank much you for, for that walk. Thank you.